Productive Pastor 103, the end of day meeting. What's going on, friends? Chad Brooks back here. Productive Pastor, the place to talk about healthy ministry through strategic productivity. I love the topic of conversation today. I love the end of days, and not because it means work is over, but because the end of the day really is that time where you set up and get ready for the next day. I've learned about this over the years, and this is one of the ways that I know I can consistently have good days. Good days turn into good weeks. Good weeks turn into good months. All the sorts of things. Before we jump into that, just let you know, I've got a super special special thing I'm cooking up for this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, You'll find out more about that in the next couple of weeks. I'm doing something a little bit different this time, but if you want to make sure you find out about this, I'm going to be talking about it more this episode. The best way to do that is to be part of the Productive Pastor email. There's a link in the show notes, revchatbrooks.com slash ppp slash 103. Sign up for that email list. I email weekly anyway about healthy ministry through strategic productivity. Go do some deep dives in the email. The email list is also where you will learn about this special Memorial Day course where I am bundling together all of the different worksheets I use each day to create the ideal ministry planner. There's going to be an eight-day wait list for this, an eight-day lead up to when the course launches. And if you want to make sure you get all of that email content, that, that stuff that's even just, it's free, that side of it is, that just leads you up into this. Make sure to sign up for the email list. Get on the wait list. Get the full eight days of that content. But let's get into the main topic of conversation for the day, our end of day meeting. The end of the day is a special time for me. It's the time where you make sure that nothing slips through the cracks. It's a 15-minute wrap-up of things. It's the time where you can set yourself up for the best tomorrow. So we're going to go straight into this. Really, there's a couple of things just to lead you into this. Number one, I talk about this uh, some in the in this conversation today, but I, episode 61 about working and keeping systems, this is a huge thing. I think for ministry productivity, you need a system that you're using to work in and then a system you use to keep things in. You know, the upcoming Memorial Day course about that ideal ministry planner, that's about a working system. And I'm going to talk a lot about my working system in this episode. So uh, if you want to cruise over, get episode 61, uh, find that wherever you find podcasts, or you can go to the link in the show notes to make sure you check that episode out as well, because this a lot of this is about my fundamental working system that I use each day. So the number one thing that I you know take care of in my end-of-day meeting is I track my commitments, where I, the things I said I was going to do some, some, something, the things where I, uh, you know, took on responsibility, uh, anytime I made an agreement with somebody else to do something, I write that down in my working notebook. Uh, Sometimes it's a template I'm using for a conversation or for a meeting. Sometimes it's just inside of notes. Sometimes it's coaching notes. When I have a coaching client, all those sorts of things, I write down the things I say I'm going to do, and I make sure at the end of the day I've committed to at least acknowledging that. And then once I've committed to the acknowledgement, if it's, it's further work past this, it goes into my Trello Weekly dashboard. That's where I'm tracking all of the big things I'm doing, where I'm keeping notes, I'm keeping evaluative systems over any project that takes really honestly longer than 10 or 15 minutes to commit to. And so I'm just going to drop those things into that. Uh, if it's I, I collect those things inside of meeting notes, uh, the calls. Uh, I might say something in an email, all that sort of thing. But the big kicker here is I have written those thing, d- things down Somehow throughout the day, you know, a lot of times if I'm in a conversation with somebody or a Zoom call, I grab a note card or a post-it and I write that thing down. And I sometimes have a, like a whole stack of those stuck at the end of the day. Um, I'll filter through those, make sure I've sorted stuff. I was on a coaching call with a client today where I asked him after the call was over, they had a particular area of expertise I could help, I could new, use some help with. And so I said, hey, who are, the, who are two or three people I might want to talk about with this? I wrote the names down on a note card. And then I immediately, after I got off the call, I popped over into my you know my monthly notebook inside of Good Note Six that I use my working notebook, and I wrote down. I made sure the heading was there. I wrote down the things I had learned, the ways to contact those people, and then I went over to Trello in my weekly dashboard where I've got a card that's tracking a much larger project. Where I'm still honestly 
in a collecting phase. I'm keeping things at that point in time right now there. I made a note to that note there. And so I've got that information in two places for when I need it next. So I'm not going to have to, you know, try to figure out where did I hear that or what was that name or get back with that person or all those sorts of things. You know, the commitments you make, the notes that you take, the things that you need to save, all that sort of stuff, you know, take a few minutes and wrap that stuff up. Uh, schedule it or save it. Now, sometimes you have to do follow-ups. And a lot of times I'll tell people, hey, I'm going to follow up, follow up with you later on today. I've got that note written down, like the things I need to follow up with them. And so I go into my email real quick. This is something also I do at the end of the day. I've got a block for emails towards the end of the day. And I write the emails I need to write. I follow up with the things that I need to follow up with them on. Or I make a note to push that first thing tomorrow morning if it's going to take me a little bit more time to get that follow-up together. So the first thing I do at my end-of-day meeting is I track my commitments and I keep my commitments or I find ways to make sure I keep that commitment. The second thing that I do is I evaluate. Now, I run my day off of my day sheet. Now, yes, I've got a, 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 a big uh, stack of stuff. I've got a list of things in my Trello Weekly Dashboard where I'm saving that stuff. My recurring daily tasks are in there or recurring weekly tasks are in there. Uh, so I'm, I'm operating off both of them. But the thing I have in front of me all the time is that day sheet. Now, you can cruise over the, uh, the show notes, revchatbrooks.com slash PPP slash 103 and get my day sheet. I give this away free. It's an incredible tool. Over a 1,000 pastors have downloaded some version of it over the last 10 years. But that's what I keep right in front of me all of the time. So I look through my day sheet. And I just look at how did my day go? I always write down what my hopeful schedule is in black ink. And then if something changes or modifies, I write it down in blue ink next to there. Or since I'm doing this digitally now in good notes, I just select the ink color over in the menu. But I, I ran this thing for paper for years and I always kept a, a blue pen on me and a black pen on me for this very purpose. So I look back at my day. How did it go? Did it go well? Was I able to kind of stick to my plan or did I get diverted significantly off my plan? It was the diversion warranted or was the diversion just my own boredom or did I just start chasing rabbits on something or did I just, just kind of do a crappy job that day paying attention to what the plan was? You know, did I finish my task list? I only like to have two or three primary tasks for the day. Something I learned from somebody years ago was, if your task list is bigger than what you can fit on a three by three post-it writing with a Sharpie, you're probably trying to do too much that day. But I, hey, did I hit my top priorities? Did I hit my secondary priorities? Did I make progress on these sorts of things? You know, why did I do this? Or maybe why not did I do this? I go back to look at the blue ink. And here's the, t the thing. Most of the time, the blue ink is not other people. Most of the time, the blue ink is me. So I evaluate, you know, was I the best steward of my time today? Was I the one that maybe was responsible or at fault for things just going squirrely? Do I need to maybe reevaluate my expectations for the next few days or the next few weeks? Is something, am I trying to do too much in the middle of a season that's already too busy? I've been on the road for two days this week. You know, uh, Wednesday was really my Monday as far as tasks were concerned. You know, it was I expecting to do too much this week, and I tried to cram it all into today. Evaluate and think about your expectancy of what you're expecting yourself to do during this moment there. So that's the second thing I do in my, in my end of day meeting. The third thing and the final thing I do is I plan for tomorrow. You know, I pull up a new template, drop in a new day sheet. I'm a big fan of a fan of time block planning, and so I, I block in what tomorrow is going to look like. Uh, I write in the calls or the conversations or the meetings that I have to go to. I think about that. Then I think about my morning because I really try to, uh, I found myself, I don't go straight into deep work and big tasks first. I love to knock out a bunch of tiny little small things early in the morning, first thing, because it just wires my brain for getting things done. So I think about what are the contacts I need to make? What are the emails I might need to be sending out? What does that early morning email block look like? What are the stuff that has to happen? And then I, then I look at it and begin moving things around. I say, Chad, let's be honest with yourself. Let's go into that Trello Weekly Dashboard. Let's look at how projects are being moved down the line as we develop those priority tasks. I adjust things to try to be as um, honest about what can actually happen tomorrow as possible. And I like doing this at the end of the day because I'm generally kind of tired. And I found myself, if I'm tired when I'm doing this, I'm a lot more accurate 
versus if I start doing this when I'm wide awake and squirrely and bushy tailed and all those sorts of things, I plan out what tomorrow looks like. And then I set up my first things. I trust my, you know, recurring tasks, which I have in Trello. Uh, but I also, these are the two or three things that I can take care of quickly and efficiently before I go into that longer deep work block. Because for me, that's kind of the way I organize my days. I always do deep work in the morning. My mind is this freshest. I don't schedule. My scheduler uh, doesn't let people book time into the mornings. Uh, if something shows up in the morning, it's only because I allow it. I have the most agency over those things. But I do like to think, what am I going to focus on when I sit down tomorrow? And how can I make sure I keep myself aligned inside of that? That's it. That's what my, my end of day meeting looks like. Guys, 15, maybe 20 minutes tops. You know, sometimes that email block can, it can, it can, it can stretch that out a little bit further, but I try to do that beforehand just to make sure I'm, I'm keeping up with those things. But you've got to have a working system. You've got to have a plan and approach to productivity. That's why I love my working notebook. That's why I'm stoked to share all of these things with people coming up this Memorial Day course release by giving you the tools to not create your perfect because perfect doesn't exist, uh, but appropriate absolutely exists. And you're the one who gets to define and clarify what appropriate looks like. So please have a working system. Talked about it all throughout it. You can go check out the entire first season, of the productive pastor to hear a lot more about that. I've got a, there's a link to a Spotify playlist where all those episodes are just stacked there. My Becoming Productive course talks about this a lot, but if you're frazzled, if you're fried, if you feel like ministry is not healthy, if you feel like you're not getting things done, if you feel like the ball is not being moved forward, you need to develop a working and keeping system. That's 100% the goal to go for if you're beginning your journey in productivity or if things are changing, things are transitioning, if ministry is changing, if you're reaching, you know, going to a new church if you are realizing that your church is at a level to where things have to change, you know, one of the places you can personally control this and personally find agency and honestly create fantastic torque and traction is making sure your working system and your keeping system is well oiled. And for me, my end of day meeting is the perfect way to do this. So that's it. Short episode, 12 minutes. We'll be back next week with another episode of Productive Pastor. Thank you all, as always, for hanging out, being part of the crew. We'd love to see you over the Productive Pastor community on Facebook, the Productivity Party. You join over a 1,000 other pastors there as we pursue healthy ministry through strategic productivity together. I'm Chad. I'll see you all back in the next episode.